These are the Falkland Islands, also known as the Islas Malvinas, and they have a very fascinating geologic history. In my previous video, I talked about how the Falklands formed and how they got split in half by this Falkland Sound. But also in my previous video, I mentioned how the Falklands rotated 180 degrees, or flipped upside down. However, for the sake of time, I did not include an explanation. So in today's video, let's investigate how the Falkland Islands have rotated 180 degrees. So the first thing we need to understand is how the Falklands formed, and I already covered this in my previous video, but I'm going to briefly recap it here. So the Falkland Islands have their origin in the continent of Gondwana, which is a large continent, sometimes classified as a supercontinent, which existed from around 600 million years ago to around 180 million years ago. And this supercontinent included Africa, South America, Antarctica, and some other landmasses of the world today. And it was in the middle of this continent where the Falkland Islands formed. And they actually formed as a connection to South Africa. And so that means that the Falkland Islands have traveled around 4,500 miles from the point where they formed. Now, before we move on, one thing that's important to mention is that this connection to Africa and the rotation of the Falklands is still a theory. Another theory states that the Falklands have always been connected to South America, and the reason for these two different theories is just because onshore geology suggests that the Falklands rotated, whereas offshore geology suggests that the Falklands have remained fixed. So, the Falklands formed as part of the Cape Fold Belt, which today are on the southern coast of South Africa. And these mountains formed around 300 million years ago when the Paleo-Pacific Ocean Plate collided with the Falklands Plateau here and made it crash into Africa, forming the Cape Fold Mountains, which the Falklands were a part of. And here's just a map of the rough location of the Falkland Islands in relation to the Cape Fold Belt, although this map uses the modern boundaries, whereas the Falklands would have been connected to the Cape Fold Belt. And there are a few primary ways we know that the Falklands were connected to South Africa like they were. One of the main reasons is the rocks that we can find in the Falklands and in South Africa. So the oldest rocks in the Falklands are known as the Cape Meredith Complex, and today they are found on the southernmost point of West Falkland. And they are comprised of gneiss and granite that hold resemblance to the Natal metamorphic province up here by Durban. Along with this, we have the West Falkland group in yellow, which is primarily comprised of quartzite that matches up really well to the Cape supergroup of South Africa. Finally, we have the Lafonia group, which is primarily comprised of mudstones and sandstones that match up really well to the Karoo Basin of South Africa. So all of the rocks on the Falklands do point to an African connection. Not only this, but the specific species of the fossils match up on both the Falklands and South Africa. But now that we can theorize that the Falkland Islands have a connection to South Africa, why do we assume that they rotated? Well again, this is primarily due to the rocks on the Falkland Islands and the direction of the ridges. So the Lafonia group here on the Falkland Islands is currently in the southern part of East Falkland. However, it matches up with the Foreland Basin that is north of the Cape Fold Belt of Africa. So if the Falklands hadn't rotated, this Lafonia group would be very out of place since it would be on the southeastern side of the Cape Fold Belt as opposed to the northwestern side where the different rocks match up. Also, the ridges on the Falklands do not make sense unless the Falklands have rotated. More specifically, if we look at the fold mountains of the Falklands, you can see that they are south verging, or they have the appearance of being folded to the south. And you can see this because they have a gentle slope facing southwards, whereas they have a steeper slope facing northwards. On the other hand, the Cape Fold Mountains in South Africa today have northward verging ridges, which is the complete opposite of the Falkland Islands, and this fact makes no sense unless the Falklands have rotated. And finally, the strongest piece of evidence we have that the Falklands rotated are the different magnetic directions of the dikes found on the Falkland Islands. Paleomagnetism is just a way to find exactly where magnetic north was, and this is found through checking the alignment of several different minerals found within sedimentary rocks, and they can show us how magnetic north has changed throughout history. But on the Falklands, something interesting happens. 
you can see that the alignment of these minerals have drastically changed over time. So here in the lower Jurassic, around 184 million years ago, you can see that the dikes were east to west. However, in the lower Jurassic, around 178 million years ago, you can see that they were northeast southwest. Is either one, magnetic north drastically changed within the six million years, or B, the Falklands rotated. And obviously, B is much more likely with a lot more evidence. So now that we have all of this evidence that the Falkland Islands were once attached to Africa and faced the other direction, how did the Falkland Islands possibly rotate 180 degrees? Well, it all has to do with the violent breakup of Gondwana. So around 183 million years ago, the Karoo Farrar Igneous Province broke out. And a large igneous province is essentially a region of the mantle where a giant plume of magma has broken through the crust. And this usually forms a giant line of volcanoes that eventually rift continents apart. And these rifts create an extensional environment, or a region where new crust is extending out into the old crust. And this is the process that separates continents. And so when this Karoo Farrar Igneous province broke out in Gondwana, it created a massive rift valley, separating the continent up into the modern day pieces. And it just so happens that one of these rifts found themselves right through the middle of the Cape Fold Belt. And because this rift is extensional, it separated the Falkland Islands from the Cape Fold Belt. And also what this rift valley did is create many fault lines between the Falklands and the surrounding oceanic crust. And so this separated the Falklands into their own microplate, or a very small tectonic plate. And this expanding ocean caused this microplate to move in a very interesting location. The Falklands ended up between three different land masses that were rapidly expanding away from each other. And this is all due to a variety of different fault lines and rifts that all fell in this newly expanding ocean. Specifically, these regions were Africa, Antarctica, and the Patagonia region of South America. And these three continents all rifted in different directions away from each other. Specifically, Patagonia and these Antarctic regions here ended up rotating outwards from the ocean. And this created what is known as the saloon door model, where these two regions are essentially expanding out on hinges away from the middle of the ocean. But the Falklands found themselves right in the middle of this ocean despite this. And this is a really important factor in the rotation of the Falklands. Because there's something I forgot to mention about the rift valley that separated the Falklands from Africa. This rift valley is not only an extensional environment, but it is also a strike-slip environment. And this creates a very interesting type of fault known as a transtensional fault. And this name comes from transverse and extensional. And so what this led to was a rift valley that was not only expanding outwards, but was also being slid along a fault line. And so this transtensional environment obviously caused the Falklands to move away from the African continent, but it also caused the Falklands to move west along this fault line, which is known as the Agolis Falkland Fracture Zone. And so this transtensional environment is the direct force responsible for the Falkland rotation. As the African continent was moving to the east, it created a long shear line along the AFFC, or essentially it dragged the Falklands microplate and gave it a clockwise rotational direction. And because all of the continents were expanding away from the Falklands, there was no other landmass for the Falklands microplate to collide with. And so this led to the rapid rotation of the Falklands microplate that we saw. In fact, almost the entire rotation of the Falkland Islands happened within around a 15 million year period, from around 190 to 175 million years ago. And this left the Falkland Islands at the around 120 to 150 degree angle that we can see it on this map. The sources vary wildly. But where did the remaining 60 to 30 percent come from? Well, it came from when the Falklands latched on to the South American continent. You see, the South American continent was really the only place where the Falklands microplate could latch onto, because Africa had a giant rift valley between it, and so did Antarctica. Whereas, if we look to the west, there is really nothing preventing the Falklands from latching on to South America. And so, the Falkland Islands got connected to Patagonia and started moving along with them, and Patagonia would eventually rotate the remaining 30 to 60 degrees that was required to move the Falklands into their modern-day position. And so, that is how the Falklands got their modern-day rotation. 
So I know this video was very technical and complicated, but I tried to explain it the best I could. If you have any questions, please comment them below. But that is going to be all for today's video. If you learned something new, please subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.